So I get asked this question probably two to three times a week. So I kind of wanted to make a video to explain why. I always get asked, why do you have so much lithium and why, why have you spent so much money on it? I kind of want to explain that to you because I think it's a very important thing for camping these days. There's two main reasons behind it. One, because I can. Two, because I'm a big believer in making life easier for myself while I'm camping because then I'm going to want to do it more. What do I mean by making it easy for myself? I've set up a little example. So this is what I mean by making my life easier. Um, to me, that's inducting cooking, air frying, toaster, all the creature comforts at home. I've got two kids, I've got a two, a two and a four year old, soon to be a five and a three year old. My God, that time goes fast. I like to spend time with them, so we, we take the bikes out, we go bushwalking, swimming creeks, all that sort of stuff. I want to spend time doing that, not necessarily worrying about getting a fire ready, cooking over the fire all the time. Don't get me wrong, I love doing that stuff and I'm all for it. But sometimes on the quick camping trips with the kids, I just want simple, quick, easy. So induction-wise, induction, induction -wise, so I can obviously have that going. Everyone goes, oh, I can run an induction mine, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, it's cool, but can you run the air fry at the same time? Like, can you be cooking the steak and the chips at the same time? That's the setup that I wanted to do. Oh, oh, and then something's read a bit earlier. So, hey, I can turn the travel buddy on as well. And I can run the travel buddy and the, and the induction and the air fryer all together and the system holds up. So as an example of this setup though, I've got air fryer, induction and travel buddy running. I'm currently using 232 amps of power in one go. There's very, very few batteries on the market that can do that and be happy about it. That's also sitting at 12.3 volts. So it's very stable very good power for all of your appliances as well. Sometimes it's also the convenience as well. So obviously boiling water and stuff is probably one of the most common things that people do when they go camping. So jet boil versus the kettle on the induction cooker. So for me as, as a get-go, the, the induction wins because it's a renewable source of energy. Um, yes, you're using power, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna be driving the next day, your oxygen is already running, it's gonna recharge your battery. So it costs you nothing to run. The initial setup, yes, but it isn't just for this that you're doing that you're doing the setup for. It benefits your fridge, your freezer, um, air fryer, toaster, all those things. So, so it's a holistic sort of setup that you're doing it for. The jet boil is purely for boiling water. So what I've got here as a little example is I've set up the exact same amount of water in both both units. My sparker and my jet boils died, so I've got to do it this way. What I'll do, turn them both on at the same time. Let's just wait and see. See which one boils first. So we're there already. So that started boiling, so that's, we'll call it two minutes 40 for the uh, induction and Technically, this is almost about to go. I'm actually surprised at myself that the um, the induction one. That's actually I was wrong. Uh, yeah, she's there now. All right, so she's boiling. So that was uh, two minutes, three minutes almost on the dot. I'll stop that. So right, so. The, power the powerhouse behind all of that cool stuff we've done outside is the LFP Cells Australia Lithium 300 Amp Hour Battery. Yeah, it sounds right. I've been running this particular battery in Betty for the last six or seven months now. Took it to Cape York, taken it through Central, Austra Central Australia, done numerous trips on it, absolutely abused the hell out of it, trying to break this thing. Like, uh, legitimately, I've been trying to make this battery fail. I can't do it. Honestly, I've tried to overload the hell out of it. My inverter, my 3000 watt inverter cuts out before this sucker does. It does have a, a automatic cutoff for over, over, uh, over current protection. It is, built, it is built in there, I'm assured of that. 
but I couldn't make it do it with the setup that I've got with my 3000 watt inverter. Maybe if you've got a 5000 watt inverter, this, this would probably struggle. But you can just get a second one of these, all of a sudden, your inverter is the weak point again, not your batteries. So that to me is super impressive. So I can max out my 3000 watt inverter and this thing just sucks it up. It just absolutely loves to give it power. So I'm super impressed with it. All right, so some of, the, some of the cool features that come with this particular battery, and then we're gonna do a capacity test as well. So these guys actually stamp every single battery that comes out of the factory um, with the manufacturing date, the capacity in amp hour. So they capacity test every single battery. So this being a 300 amp hour battery, capacity tested at 311 amps. But I'm gonna do my own capacity test and, and see if that at least matches it now that it's six months old or betters it or go from there and then obviously the um the bluetooth identification number as well so that gives away one of the features it does have a built-in bluetooth monitoring system uh, so it's only in internal shunt um gives you all the information I'll, I'll put it up on the screen in a second basically what what, what all that shows you it does have if your battery is visible say it's in a canopy or something like that um, it does have an external battery voltage, well, sorry, a battery gauge on, on the top of the unit as well. It's just very indicative, sort of 100%, 75, 50, 25, empty. Um, and you can actually turn the battery off from memory. It's been a while since I've done this part of it. There you go, so you can actually turn all that off as well. So everything sort of shuts down if for some reason it needs to go into storage or, or something, which is super cool. All right, that's the real basics of, of the battery there. The cell chemistry inside, I will put up on the screen here because I always forget what it is. So I'm basically just gonna list it all right here, what the, what the type of cells are, the grade of cells, and the longevity of it. Warranty of these suckers is actually really impressive. So this thing has got a five year warranty down to 90%. So after, if, if at the five year point, it's below 90% capacity, free, replacement warranty no questions just yep cool it's below the 90% at the five-year mark new battery which speaks volumes for the confidence that they've got in this product overall okay so the battery is fully charged now and I've set up my little 12 volt battery monitor thing here I'll get another shot of it in a second for you um, I'm gonna set it to 12 amps of discharge per hour so essentially this is going to take about 30 odd hours. So the other thing to keep in mind with this as well, so your average battery is like maybe 2,000 watt hours, so stuff like the um, EcoFlow battery box in the, in the background there, that's 2,016 watt hours and you're paying like 3,000 bucks for those things. This thing is 4,000 watt hours for 1,700 bucks, plus a discount which is coming. Um, so super good value. So I have found a little bit with the sock value in, in the app versus my shunt in the car. It's a little bit out. I'm talking like for the first 20%, it's fine. Um, after that, especially if you're using some big current stuff, it might find it, say the, the sock in this is saying around about 62% and the shunt saying 65 to 70%. Um, I found this drops a little bit faster than what the actual shunt does. Um, so it's a little bit inaccurate I found over time, but it, it tidies, itself up, tidies itself up very quickly as soon as you start charging it. It, it gets back in sync with the, um, with the actual shunt. But I'd rather it actually show me a little bit less than more, which, it, which is what it's doing, because that way I can control how much power usage I'm, I'm actually use, using overall. So while we're waiting for that to charge up, I just want to quickly talk about the benefits of lithium over, over a lead acid or a deep cycle style of battery inside a car. Um, Appliances will just run better when the voltage is more stable. So if you imagine uh, a normal lead acid battery, as soon as you put load on there, if you've got some multimeters, you've ever done this, um, say it's sitting at 12.7 volts, you put a load on there, that's gonna drop to 11 volts very, very quickly. Considering most 12 volt appliances require minimum sort of, not minimum, but they, they like to run on around about 12.6 to 12.8 volts is sort of their optimal sort of range. Yep, the appliance would be struggling and definitely not running as efficient, so motors won't be running as fast and, and things just won't be as seamless as what they should be. The advantage to a lithium, I'm sure a lot of, the, a lot of you people already know this because lithium's been out for a while now, the, a lithium battery will hold its voltage higher for longer. So the nominal voltage on 
generally on a lithium battery is around, is, they hold around about 13.2 volts, 13.3 volts is the average that they'll hold, even under load. Um, under heavy load like before, no, they'll drop down to 12.6, 12.3, but that's still more than enough to run to run what you're doing, especially when you're running it through inverters, because obviously that boosts the voltage up to 240 volt to make things work. Stuff like fridges is where you're going to gain your the the biggest benefit. So if you can imagine a fridge running off a lead acid battery, and as that voltage drops, um, the fridge runs less and less efficient. So if you get say two days out of your lead acid from, from a 100 amp hour battery, keeping in mind generally you're going to use 50% of a lead acid battery before you start to damage it, so you've got 50 amps. If you've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery, you've obviously you've got the full 100 amps to use because you can drain them completely. So you've already, you've doubled your capacity, but you're also using it more efficiently. So ho hopefully I'm explaining this right for you. Um, Say and on a percentage of of efficiency, a lead acid is going to use around about 75% of the of the efficiency of the battery. So because it's going to drop low, sort of that 12 volt for the most part, and it, it's this fridge is going to be running more often. So it's going to run 25 to 30% more than if it was getting the proper 13 volts that the lithium will put out because the fridge can run more efficiently to cool better and to and to to work better. If that makes sense here, hopefully it does. Um, I've found that I actually use less power with lithium as opposed to um, a, lead, a lead acid because of that efficiency benefit. But yeah, ho hopefully I've explained that properly. And, that, and that's across the board with everything as well. So um, travel buddies, obviously a lot of people run tra travel buddies these days. There's obviously some other brands out there which uh, I'm, a, I'm a supporter of Aussie, Aussie made stuff, which this battery is Aussie made as well. Yes, it's imported parts, but that's because Australia doesn't make cells and all that sort of stuff. But this is a, a good Aussie company doing cool stuff here in Australia. They're all, they're all made right here. They're not sort of just bought in and resold like another particular brand of battery. Um, so that's a big benefit. But stuff like a travel buddy requires um, around about 13 volts to actually heat the element properly. Um, if you're running it on lead acid and the car's not running, it, it, not that it won't work, but it'll sort of hold temperature. It won't necessarily increase temperature unless you've got a big um, step step up inverter. That's extra money again, and it's, it's just another thing to go wrong. It's another thing to have to store in the car, and there's other issues with it. So I can run my travel buddy with the car off from dead cold, and I can turn it on, and it just fires up like an oven, and it's it's beautiful. Everything just works in it efficiently because it's got the right voltage. So hopefully I've explained this little segment well enough for you. If you've got any other questions, though, definitely drop it down in the comments down below and I'll see if I can answer it a little bit more with a bit more clarity. Um, sometimes if I can put stuff in writing, it's a bit better. But that's the idea behind why lithium isn't necessarily a bigger capacity. It's just more efficient for the appliance. Okie dokie. So that is... Oh, it's a bit bright, isn't it? Let me make that a bit... There we are. Okay, so that's that's the charger done, finally. And I actually need to get this back on charge ASAP because I'm going away tomorrow, so I need to charge this battery up again now. Um, so that was, you see it on the screen as well, it, the cutoff voltage is 10.7. It could go slightly lower, but I figure that's about where appliances start to lose efficiency. That's why I've set it to that. It's done 3,883... Um, what were they again? Well, watt hours. So, as I was saying before, the like the Blue Eddy unit sort of thing, they were like they're like 2,000. So, to get nearly 4,000 watt hours, you can see they're twice as big. Uh, it's, it's 302 amps. So, the battery is rated to 300 amps. Perfect. Obviously, the original testing for this came in at 311. That could be variances in test equipment as well. So, just because mine gets that, mine mine might have consistently got that when it was brand new as well versus what um, LFP Cells Australia testing equipment shows. That's just variance in equipment. So I'm, I'm happy that it got over 300 amps. That's all I, I wanted to achieve out of it. Didn't have to get the 311, but um, definitely still holding the rated capacity. Nearly nine months in, I worked, I worked it up before. 8th of May, I picked up this battery. It's now the, what are we? It's the uh, 9th of January, 2025. So nine months of abusing, abusing, Cape York, heat, corrugations, everything else, and the thing is still going strong. Um, and that took 25 hours and 11 minutes, so that was a long time. <laughs> Some of the things I'm not keen on about the battery isn't necessarily about the battery itself. It's about how you manage the battery. 
So with big capacity comes a requirement for big charging capacity. Um, so I've had the car sitting in the shed now for two days, fridges are running, both the fridge and a freezer running in the car, just getting ready for a trip, I hadn't driven the car, and the, and the battery is now down to 55.5%. So as seen right there, 55%. Having said that, at 55%, I've still got more capacity than most, most people would in their battery. Anyway, I've still got 166 amps sitting in the battery, so most people only really have like 100 to 150 amp battery, sort of is the, is the general. So I've still got plenty of capacity there, but it's how do I charge it efficiently? This is, I've got a 40 amp charger, which is about the most my alternator can put up with um, while running the rest of the car and all the rest of it. So, I could run, say, a 60 amp charger and it'd be okay, but that's about the limit for the 120 amp hour alternator in the, the in Betty. So I'm kind of in the conundrum of how do I charge it efficiently? I'm probably going to change the charger to 60 amp. We'll get 240 amps and see how it goes at 80, and but that's a lot of stress on the alternator. Um, so I'll see how I go there. But charging is an issue when you have this much capacity. Uh, so putting in, I need to put another 150 amps thereabouts to get it back up to fully charged. So that's best case scenario. So best case scenario, I'm doing 40 amps an hour, which it doesn't because charger only really puts out around about 38 amps. And then you've got the usage on top of that as well. So the fridge and freezer will kick in and out. So I might only be charging for 30 amps at a certain period of time as well. So best case scenario, 40 amps an hour, 40, 80, 120, uh, 160. So that's minimum four hours of driving to get it back up to 100%. Um, not everyone does four hours worth of driving. I've got about an hour and a half up to Mansfield now where I'm going. And it's not soon to put in like 50 amps, 50 amps. It's not going to be that much. So then I've got probably another hour and a half to camp from there. So it, it'll get up there, but it's not going to be fully charged by the time I get to camp tonight. That's some of the limitations I'm finding with big capacity. You need big systems to run them as well. So it's something to keep in mind for how do you charge all this capacity at the same time. Okay, so just coming to the mansion now. So this, is, this for me this is like an hour and 40 minutes from home. I'm driving for an hour and 40, hour and 50 or so. And actually Mansfield's two hours, sorry. Back, back there when my parents used to live was an hour and 40. Um, currently sitting at 72.5% so it's gone up from 54% to 72% um, so that was 165 amps from memory to 217 that's in we'll call it two hours is around here um, so you can sort of see it takes its time to fully get up there it will get there eventually um, but from 50% or so I need half a day's drive and minimum just to be able to sort of get it back up there so I can actually use it properly overnight. Uh, oh, 62 is sitting on its ass. You see that? Hmm, probably not from that angle. But get some airbags, people. Come on. So if you've made it this far into the video, you're probably here because you're keen on buying a lithium battery. Or you're like me, but we all know you're here for the lithium battery. So lfpcellsaustralia.com.au is the website. It's a really cool website. Lots of extra inf in lots of extra information on the website really good plenty of um, information about like cells and the types of battery how it's done um, there's three different types of batteries that they sell so they get the 300 amp hour which I've got a 330 amp hour which is relatively new and then you've got a slimline version which I think is 180 amp hours for memory but don't quote me on it jump on the website tons of information over there so pricing <laughs> these batteries are already super competitive for pricing so the 300 amp hour battery is $1,700 which is phenomenal value in my view. But because LFP Cells Australia are legends, they've given us a promo code to give us a 15, that's right, 15% 15 discount plus free shipping Australia wide if you use promo code A4X4A at the checkout. So that is gonna save you an absolute bomb. That's a couple hundred bucks plus free shipping. It's gonna be phenomenal value for what you're gonna get out of it. I would highly employ you to at least go have a look. I think they're, they're a great company, great people and great products, which is definitely the most important part of it. So definitely go have a, have a squeeze at least. If you do end up getting one, tag me in a post or something, I'd love to share it and I'd love, I'd love to know that you people are actually getting some, it'd be great. Other than that, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week.